big issue coming into this year, even with a lot of new personnel and, and Taylor really missing the last two games. Impressive that, that only four sacks after after three games here? Yeah, I think our guys have been doing a good job of of giving me some time. You know, I think that um, we put a lot of focus and attention on it, you know, throughout the, the off season. Um, but it's really a, a full unit thing, right? It's it's the blocking up front. It's myself getting the ball out and receivers winning in, in a quick time so that the ball can come out. So I'm uh, really proud of our guys and, um, you know, seeing some of the spring and training camp work pay off. Are you in a situation a lot of times where you're trying to get the ball, you're getting the ball out quicker? You, you know, has it been noticeable for you? And also, are you like doing more of living to play another day when nothing's there and just throwing the ball away? Uh, I think that it all comes into play. You know, I think that just knowing, knowing what concepts you got, you know, are you going to have an opportunity down the field? Um, if you do, great, you know, take, take a shot at it. If not, then, you know, find a completion somewhere. And if, if nothing's going to be available, then, you know, get rid of the ball, throw it away in a safe place. Ryan, got the strong start to the game on Sunday. What's the challenge now in carrying it through halftime and, and being more productive and staying on the field longer in the second half? Yeah, no doubt. we got to come out and execute better in the second half. Um, like you said, we did some good things in the first half and, and really didn't do nearly as many good things in the second half. And it wasn't uh, a drop-off in, in focus or urgency, I didn't feel like. Um, we just missed some opportunities on, on making some plays. So just have to clean those little things up and uh, be able to come out and carry that momentum through halftime into the second half. You mentioned the blocking the O-line. When it comes to the Colts defense, one of the best rush defenses in the league through the first three weeks, what stands out to you on the tape and just how much of a challenge do they pose, not only for Derek, but the offense and what you're trying to do as a whole? Yeah, no doubt. They're a really solid defense. You know, you start up front. Uh, they have a, a big penetrating front. They play fast. Their edge rushers are, are good. Um, their backers play really fast, you know, whether Shaq plays or not. You know, the guys they have in there across the board play with a lot of speed. They're long, they're, you know, they, they use their length well, and they play with a lot of speed. So it makes it tough for the O-line to get up on that second level. Uh, then secondary-wise, they, they don't play a ton of defenses. You know, they're pretty simple in what they do, but they're really good at what they do. You know, that's their philosophy is they're going to be good at a, at a few things, and... Um, you know, they, they mix it up by where they drop their safeties in and all that type of stuff. But uh, at the end of the day, their, their focus is playing really good at, at what they do. And you got to tip your hat to them. They're doing a good job of it. Ryan, how good was it to get Robert Woods going? It, he kind of had something going there in that last game. Um, just how important is to keep that? And also, um, just <coughs> anything with Austin Hooper, you're gonna, just continuing to, to make that somebody you're going to target. Yeah, no doubt. You know, I think. Um, Robert's done a good job the past two weeks, really, of, of kind of building on, on what he did in, in Buffalo and coming out and having another good game here at home last week. So definitely just want to you know, keep it going in that direction with, with him. And then you know, Hooper's going to get his opportunities. You know, hopefully sooner rather than later, we'll see you know, when they end up coming up. But uh, obviously, you know, a talented guy and have a lot of chemistry with him. So I'm just looking forward to those spots opening up in games and being able to get him the ball. Does it shorten the learning curve significantly when it's veteran to veteran when a new guy comes in? It definitely shortens it. Um, you know, some things just don't, it's a quick conversation as opposed to having to introduce something. You know, he's already seen it before, heard it before. We're just getting on the same page. Some things I don't even have to tell him. You know, he just already knows and, and does it. So, yeah, having that veteran presence in that room, that veteran leadership there, I mean, just as far as getting on the same page with me, um, he's done a great job so far, and uh, it's, it's showing. How do you like the guys to come back to you and, and tell you they're open on a play when you may not have, have gone to them? Like, how has that type of conversation gone uh, for you guys so far this season? Oh, it's good. I mean, it's going to happen, right? You're not going to see every open guy every time. You know, you're kind of going through your reads. Um, you know, safeties may dictate it, coverage may dictate it, or it could just be a play dictated. So you're not going to see the full field every single play. And, you know, occasionally, you know, a guy's going to win on the backside or something. So um, just having that dialogue of, okay, how they're playing me on the backside, you know, what, what this corner's uh, doing to me, okay, in this, in this coverage, I'm getting this outside leverage. I think we have something here on the inside. You know, whatever the case may be, you know, that dialogue, dialogue has been good, and uh, it's going to be critical as we move forward throughout the season to take advantage of some of those situations that arise, you know, throughout a game, and we can make mid-game adjustments. Ryan, after the start to the season, how nice would it be to be able to get back to 500 uh, going, you know, at the start of October? Oh, it's huge. You know, we want to go 1-0 this week. You know, that's the goal each and every week. But 
Um, crucial at this point in the season to, to go get a win. We got an, uh, a division opponent on the road in a tough place to play. So, you know, have our hands full, but it's, it's going to be important for us to go out and play well. Is, is part of the reason you think, Ryan, there's been so, so much variety in the, in the receivings and receiving yards this year, don't necessarily have that dominant number one receiver? Or are you more likely to, to look broadly, I, I guess, at your options than maybe you were? You know? Yeah, I mean, I think. Uh, you know, I try to try to find a, a good spot to go with the ball each and every time I get to throw it. You know, whether that's you know, matchup dependent or play dependent, it all kind of varies depending on what we have going on. But our guys have have shown across the board that uh, each of them have different strengths and and can get open for me. So have a lot of confidence. You know, no matter what the play call is, that we'll find a good spot to go with the ball. With getting Derek involved in the pass game on Sunday and with what Hilliard's been able to do, how good is it to know that the check down is not necessarily a give up play? Yeah, yeah. Anytime you check the ball down to, to Derek or Dontrell, you know it's, it's not even close to a, to a give up play. Both those guys are explosive with the ball in their hands. You know Derek had some good gains underneath, uh, as well as Dontrell and and what he's done, you know, a little bit earlier in the season. So, um, yeah, you know we're going to try to push the ball downfield and and take our shots and give opportunities to our receivers, but um, not going to force it into into a window we shouldn't and and drop it down when we need to. Is the learning curve kind of coming along for for Chig, in your opinion and you know, when do you think he might be may possibly more involved in the, in the offense? Yeah, if Chig, I think, has done a good job with what we've asked him to do. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, we can get him more involved as, as the season goes on. Um, but right now, he's, he's jumping into to everything we're asking him to do. He's obviously shown, you know, he can make some plays for us on special teams and, and on offense. So, um, yeah, if he can continue to progress, then we want to get him involved and, and help create another weapon on our offense. You had a chance to say anything to Taylor, I guess, since he got put on uh, injured reserve? Yeah, I've been communicating with Taylor, man. It's just tough to to see him go down again, you know, for the second time in, in well, I guess, three years. Um, just really a, a tough situation with how everything went with him and, and why he's out and all that. I'll let him get into that. But uh, really just frustrating situation for him primarily and, and um, just missing, missing having him around, missing having him you know, anchoring down that left side for us. What's it like when he's going to be a little bit quieter now the rest of the season? <laughs> no doubt it'll be a little bit quieter. Uh, you know, sideline conversations from the O-line department will be a lot less, but uh, definitely going to miss Taylor. What's it like when a new guy comes in, whether it's Dennis Daly or maybe LaRaven Clark now, and, and, and building trust with those guys? Yeah, you have to, uh, you have to trust them from the jump. You know, you can, uh, Dennis kind of got thrown in there um, after being here just a, a short period of time. Uh, but he came in, he did a good job for us, and I think you know, he's getting kind of settled in a little bit over there on the left side. We'll continue to, uh, to build that trust even more. And you know, I'm confident in, in what he's done so far and that he can continue to you know, do that and be better. How uh, much have you watched? I know Fort Lauderdale's maybe on the other side of where the hurricane's coming in, but how much have you kind of watched your hurricane coverage uh, you know, for, for Florida this week? Yeah, watching it. Um, you know, over the weekend, you know, just kind of seeing where, where that thing was going to end up going, um, obviously kind of turned into a, a big storm there. So, you know, thoughts and prayers go with, with everyone there on the west coast of Florida. Um, really hope that, that everyone can remain safe and it's not too bad. Um, as far as the east coast goes and, and Fort Lauderdale, you know, it ends up just being, I think, a little bit less than tropical winds and, and a lot of rain. So, um, yeah, thankful, thankful everyone down there is safe, but pray for the people on the west coast. Hi, Teresa. Mike, you had the strong start on Sunday in the first half. Now what's the challenge of trying to get that to carry through halftime and, and play that well or close to that well in the second half? Well, it's always a challenge, but it's something obviously that we have to continue to look at in, in all three phases. Um, you know, just making sure that, you know, we're prepared this week. It'll be critical, um, you know, against the Colts we've been up. Uh, we've been behind the, these games, you know, I mean, both teams are going to battle. So it's going to be a challenge throughout. We'll have to, um, you know, make sure that whatever, whatever we're doing early, uh, if it's positive, we'll have to continue it. And then if not, you know, make sure that we're battling to, to get back in the game like we did last year. And, you know, if we do get up, it's, it's going to be a struggle to be able to close anybody out. What would you say are some of the keys to you guys being able to get the rushing attack going? Well, I mean, it's, it's no different than what it is. It takes 11 guys. It takes us, you know, playing with fundamentals, playing with pad level, playing with, um, you know, good, good, great technique, breaking some tackles, you know, everybody getting to the support players and, and making sure we're, we're working to, to the right guys. As you watch the 
film, do you feel like you're getting closer to one of those long runs by Derrick Henry? Well, I mean, I think some of that is is just going to be, um, you know, you don't you don't draw them up thinking that they're going to be 75 yarders. We've had some, you know, we had some runs that were really close. Um, we've had some some really good official runs that uh, had one that got us down to the one yard line. We, we you know, broke through. We've gotten on the safety a couple times. So confident that if we can continue to to do some some things that we were doing, um, you know, the other day, that'll be a challenge. This is a great defense, fast. Um, you know, they run the football. It hasn't been easy to run the football on them. So, you know, we'll have to it would be great this week. You mentioned how good of a defense it is. Colts coming in with third best rush defense. You mentioned they're fast up front. What, what are some of the challenges they bring? Uh, well, they're athletic. I mean, they have a very consistent scheme. I, I think that, um, you know, they don't, they don't really, you know, it's not like they're trying to trick you. They, they're, they play a bunch of guys up front. You know, Buckner and Stewart are, are the leaders in there that, you know they can they can move they can they can stay in their gap they can you know play with their hands they do a lot of different things uh, the edge guys are, are active and fast and in a tough matchup and then you know just really inside the linebackers are are, are fast they tackle um, you know it's gonna it's gonna be critical that you know we try to get on them if you don't put a hat on them you know they'll they'll be there and and, and most likely you know trying to hammer the football out. What makes Taylor kind uh, of you? You face a lot of good running back. What makes Taylor unique? Well, speed, breakaway speed, speed toughness, um, but also patience um, to dip in and, and kind of burst out. Um, you know, we're all at the point of attack. We're, we're going to have to have a great wall. Um, you know, can't give him a whole lot of seams. And, you know, tackling him one-on-one -on -one is not um, not where, where you want to be all afternoon. Is he as close a challenge as there is to, like, Derrick Henry right now? Like, you get a sense of what other teams deal with? against you this well, week? Well, I mean, I don't really like to get into comparisons. They're a different type of back. You know, they have a obviously different running style. And But, you know, that's the challenge this week is is what they'll try to do and, and how they've used him in the different, you know, schemes, whether it's under center or in the gun, uh, inside zone, outside zone, you know, gap scheme. So, you know, th there's a lot of different things that they, they present. This week, Roy, it's kind of when your DBs are going up against a guy like Pittman. Um, those jump balls are, are, are coming their way. What's the kind of the best strategy there? Well, I think you have to stay patient. You know, first is that you stay patient and, and not start, you know, grabbing. You know, I mean, trying to make sure that you're in phase and you know, and then also challenge and, and play, try to play the football and, 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 and go up through the pocket. How much has D'Amico's ability to slide out to the edge helped you to – Offset some of the depth issues you've had with injuries at outside line. Well, his you know his versatility and, and really just his attitude and presence here since uh, he's been with us has been outstanding. It's you know a player that we've always had a lot of respect for. Um, love coaching him, love watching him compete uh, and, and help him. You know he's factored for us and he can you know, move inside. You know do a nice job on the edge. So you know that's um, that's a great skill set to be able to do both of it for us. Your assessment of where Ryan is with this uh, group of receivers at this point? Um, you know, I mean, we've had some favorable plays. We've we've had some you know, passes that we'd like to have back. Um, you know, we'll keep you know, keep improving and, and trying to get better. But I think that it's um, you know there were some there were some really nice things that we did the other day. You know, unfortunately we threw <clears throat> you know we threw the interception. Ryan threw the interception, and but. You know, there were there were some X plays in there. Uh, there were some times where we had to, you know, pick up some big third down conversions, and so um, you know, we're just looking for consistency. We're looking for great, you know, quarterback play and, and making sure that you know, Ryan's executing our offense and the guys are helping him out and being where they need to be. What are your thoughts on the way Jelani Woods emerged, uh, especially as a red zone target? I know he was a guy that you guys had some interest in coming up. Um. Well, I think that as you look at that last statement there, Tron, we, we have interest in all of them. You know, we look at all the players, um, tall, long, athletic, you know, just a mat, you know, match up uh, in the red zone that's difficult. Um, you, you know, the quarterback can, can put it up there and they can, you know, try to make a play. So he made a huge play the other day, you know, very impressive play, great timing. You know, Matt put it put it where it needed to be, and again, it's just the 
the, the, the catch radius is, is a lot bigger when you're looking at a guy that size. What are some of the tackle, factors regarding? The tackles numbers are pretty good right now. Um, is that a good thing, or does he need to break up a few more passes along the way? Um, he, he's, he's gotten a lot of the, you know, I mean, you look at some of those, and, and again, those can be misleading, I think. I, I hear where you're trying to get to with as far as, like, the, you know, catch tackle, and the guy just keeps throwing it. It hasn't been that, you know I mean? We've played some zone with him in there and in the nickel and first and second down, you know, nickel, that, that player is a, is a glorified linebacker. And so, um, you, you know, they, every, every DB and everybody that we have cover needs to try to cover better. But I would say that his, his production in there has come from, you know, triggering in a run game or whether it's a screen or, you know, a vice tackle, they, they catch it in front of you. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll keep working with Roger and his versatility. What you like about uh, Schobert? I know he's only on the practice squad, but what's the challenge for a guy like that who hasn't had a you know, full camp or, or, or weeks of practice as well? He's played a lot of football. You know, he's played a lot of football inside, inside linebacker. Um, he's an instinctive player, and uh, we'll see where he is at the end of the week and, and how he can help us just like everybody else that we asked to you know, prepare like they're, they're going to be a starter this week. Just got here, Mario Edwards and Raven Clark. What do you like about those guys and, and how important is it to get up to speed as quickly as possible? Yeah, it's it's going to be, uh, you know, a challenge. But, you know, the Raven is somebody that, again, has played some football. That's kind of what you target at this point in time uh, in the season, you know, with guys that have been, you know, have played, you know, and maybe in different systems. Uh, so he's working hard with, with the coaches. He was in here the last couple of days since we signed him. Um, you know, Mario's played, has been productive, has some versatility. So, you know, we'll see if he can help us. Beyond just blocking better, has there been any other factors that have contributed to the pass protection being better? Is Ryan getting the ball out quicker, or is he just is he throwing it away when he knows there's obviously nothing there? Are there some of those things coming into play? Uh, we're just trying to do the best each and every week. You know, we've played some, some pretty good players, um, you know, so just doing different things. And, you know, in protection and, and, and with the with the route that we have, knowing that you don't have all day when, you know, we've played some of the guys that we've played. Mike, what does it mean to be able to get to 500 after the start to this season? I think that's just all you're all you're, all you're looking for is just try to get, um, you know, back to the surface. You know, it's obviously the next week. It's a challenge. It's on the road. You know, first division game. Um, so, it, you know, it's it's going to be a lot of work this week. You know, we're going to have to put as much into it as we ever have. I think that the guys are excited, you know, to, to, for the challenge and making sure that, you know, we understand who, who these guys are, we have a lot of respect for, for this organization, for, for this team. Um, you know, these have been, you know, battles, you know, each and every year, each and every game, twice a year. So, uh, you know, that preparation has already begun.